Director and HOD of Surgical Gastroenterology from Asian Institute of Gastroenterology. Thank you so much. At the That's outset, at the thank system. the organizing committee for the honor of this podium. If you look at pancreatic cystic neoplasm, there has been an overall increasing incidence, and the incre incidence seems to be increasing with age, with a reported prevalence of about 2 to 16 percent, partly because of increased use of high resolution cross sectional imaging. Uh, these are diverse presentations, varying malignant potential, and unnatural, uh, uncertain natural history, and evidence based approach to the management is very, very limited regarding this. Currently, the distinction between various PCNs is about in the tune of 60%, not definitely 100%, and ability to predict the future outcomes is very less accurate, and significant number of patients seems to be overtreated, undergoing unnecessary surgery, which could be high risk. The management of pancreatic cystic neoplasm seems to be revolving around imaging, surveillance, and therapy. This is the vicious cycle it goes through. Some of the typical lesions and large symptomatic lesions seem to be going for surgery after imaging. But a majority of these patients undergo a vicious cycle of imaging and surveillance. And if you look at the data that is available, majority of these patients undergo surveillance. These incur huge cost implications to the healthcare system for limited benefits, considering that significant portion of these things behave like benign lesions. And current guidelines for the diagnosis and management are more based on expert opinion rather than any evidence. The key issues are accurate diagnosis, diagnosis between benign and malignant, surveillance imaging, how and how long, and intervention with endoscopic surgery, and avoid unnecessary interventions which are associated with significant morbidity and mortality. As in today, the radiological imaging is based on high resolution uh, cross-sectional imaging, uh, but CT and MRI alone are not powerful enough to characterize these pancreatic cystic neoplasms as in today. Endoscopic imaging seems to be gaining inroads into the managing of pancreatic cystic neoplasms, and you talk about pancreaticoscopy and endoscopic ultrasound. Pancreaticoscopy could be pre op ERCP and intra op ERCP, and we are talking about beyond shades of grain in endoscopic ultrasound. As in today, we talk about 3D intraductal ultrasound and EUS elastography, which seems to enhance the characterization of this pancreatic cystic neoplasms compared to conventional endoscopic ultrasound imaging. There is no doubt that both 3D intraductal ultrasound and US elastography have definitely have an advantage in characterizing these lesions. And if you look at endoscopic US guided FNA, conventionally we used to depend on gross cytological biochemical tests in the form of a string test, cis fluid cytology, or a cis viral cytology, and the CA estimation of the cis fluid. But these have very, very limited, the sensitivity and the specificity is not very high of all these gross cytological and biochemical uh, analysis that we have as in today. As far as endoscopic ultrasound is concerned, the roadmap for the future is, seems to be more than few shades of grey that we see as in today, and we talk about tumor markers, confocal uh, laser endomicroscopy, cytobrushings, and microforceps biopsy to enhance the yield and also to differentiate between various uh, cystic neoplasms. And if you see, there are, uh, there are, uh, depending on the presence and absence of markers, mutations, chromosomal aneuploidy, we can differentiate various pancreatic cystic neoplasms, and these markers seem to have a very, very high specificity and sensitivity to differentiate various pancreatic cystic neoplasms. Endoscopic or EUS guided cytobrushings is another thing that is coming in a big way to differentiate these neoplasms. These the endo EOS guided cytobrushings have shown enhanced yield of intercellular mucin, statistically proven superiority over conventional fluid aspiration that we do, but the evidence is very, very limited and we still have to wait and see about this EOS guided endoscopic cytobrushings. We have this microforcep that is come in a big way that goes to the 19 gauge needle. So EOS guided, you no more aspirate, you go put in a biopsy forcep through this EOS needle and this is a welcome development. But very few reports have shown promise, and we require more studies to show the yield of these things and how they are able to differentiate between various pancreatic cystic neoplasms. You can very clearly see you are able to take pinch biopsies from the cyst wall or from the, from the tumor itself. Real-time optical diagnosis using needle-based confocal laser under microscopy seems to be the in thing right now. We talk about. Uh,